My 26 female parents decided to name my sister and me after American states. Her name is Arizona, and I was called Pennsylvania at birth. Yeah, my parents are weird. I guess they thought geographical names were cool, but I think there's a huge difference between calling your child Arizona or Dakota or Paris versus Pennsylvania. Everyone has called me Penn or Penny for as long as I can remember. My parents insisted that everyone was to call me by my full name, but most people could see how ridiculous my parents were. My sister, 28, didn't struggle as much with her name since Arizona just sounds better than Pennsylvania, and the Grey's Anatomy character, Arizona Robbins, made the name seem quite cool as we got older. I was mocked and teased as a child in elementary school because of my parents' insistence on my full name. They would literally berate my teachers for letting me write Penny on my work and books. When I was 21, I legally changed my name to Penelope. Most people I'd met in college assumed that I went by Penny as a nickname for Penelope. Even my boyfriend's mother called me Penelope because I was too embarrassed to tell her that Penny was short for Pennsylvania. I kept it a secret from my parents and close family because I knew my parents would go mental and accuse me of disrespecting their choice. I'm getting married this summer to my lovely boyfriend Tom, 31, and as you all know, you have to say your full name at your wedding ceremony when you give your vows. I knew I had to fess up about the name change because the alternative would be hoping they kept quiet when they heard me say I Penelope instead of I Pennsylvania. I invited them over to my home and I tried to tell them really calmly that I'd changed my name, but they freaked out. They said that I was disrespectful, I was calling their choice dumb, etc. They're refusing to attend the wedding now. I know I'm not the idiot for changing my name, but my parents are particularly angry about how I kept it hidden for five years before telling them. Most people I know agree with them. They think I should have had the courage to be honest with them years ago so they would have had time to get used to it instead of me dropping the news on them two months before my wedding and causing all this drama. A few other family members have dropped out and my poor sister, who's my maid of honor, is having a nightmare with this. My parents believe they had the right to know much earlier. Parents think I'm the idiot for keeping this a secret. So am I? Edit, I know I could ask the officiant priest to say Penny instead of Penelope, but I don't want to hide my real name on my wedding day. Not the idiot. You can change your name if you want. The name your parents lumbered you with at birth was an excellent reason to do so. From what you've written, I suspect your parents would have blown up whatever, and the five years is just a pretense on which to hang their anger. Two months is enough to get used to the idea too. As for boycotting the wedding because of it, they need to get over themselves. That is a big overreaction in my mind. Your parents need to grow up a bit, to be honest. How come none of your relatives are appalled that your parents care more about a dumb name than their actual child? Jesus, here's the easy part. Those who side with your parents don't get a wedding invite. The only people who will be present are those who love and support you. People who think that they have more say than you do over your own freaking name and all the emotions and things you've been through and that are directly associated with it are not the sort of people you want at your wedding. They will make it about your name and ultimately how it affects them. They say it's about you, not them. They can leave in the general direction of nowhere and never return. The name is so ridiculous that it's impossible for me to focus on anything past that. It's like calling a kid in the UK Yorkshire or Sussex. Absolutely not the idiot. Damn, Pennsylvania. Jesus Christ. If your parents spent 13 years of your school life trying to force everyone to call you Pennsylvania, I suspect they would have spent the past five making you miserable for changing your name. Hence your silence. Dear Colorado and Mississippi, I mean, mom and dad, no matter when I told you of my name change, you would have blown up. I tried to explain my feelings multiple times over the years, and you never cared about my feelings about my name. You are uninvited to my wedding, and I plan on having no contact with you. Anyone you try to get on your side will also be NC. Congratulations on losing a daughter and a son-in-law. I'll, 27 female, be getting married in the next year. No date finalized yet. Originally, I had planned to have my stepdad and my paternal grandpa share the father of the bride duties because my dad has been dead since I was six years old, and my stepdad has been there for me almost as long. However, my grandpa is hugely important and has played the role of the most important man in my life after my dad. My stepdad did not want to share the role, and he wanted the walk down the aisle and the father-daughter dance to be just us. He told me he was not okay with my grandpa doing things either alone or with him. He told me when it came down to it, he was the real dad in my life since I was seven years old. While he might not be biologically my dad, he has been married to my mom and taking care of me for 20 years, 
and he's also the father to all my siblings, and his place in my life should be honoured and not shared with a grandparent just because I lost my dad. So I told him I would just have grandpa then. There was more to the conversation and it came back up during my mom's birthday dinner. He mentioned it in front of his family, aka his parents and siblings, as well as my mom and my mom's family. He told me he wanted to be the father of the bride, walk me down the aisle, a father-daughter dance, a toast, and everything that comes traditionally with this. Because he brought it up in front of them and I was slightly annoyed by him bringing it up again without clarifying he was okay with sharing the role, I told him no again. I also told him I'd already asked Grandpa. This was in front of both families and a debate started. Once I realised I was hated for saying no by his family and some of my mom's family, including my mom, disliked that I couldn't let him do it, but some were on my side, I decided to leave. My stepdad told me I'd humiliated him and made the dinner all about me. I said he brought it up first and he told me kindness and decency would suggest I not turn him down in front of everyone. I also got a very angry message from one of his siblings and another from the same sibling on behalf of his parents. They told me I had no business treating him this way. When I didn't reply to this person either time, my stepdad told me I was going out of my way to behave inappropriately and to hurt him. The importance of my paternal family in my life has always been an issue for my stepdad and his family, but especially the importance of my grandpa. For many years, my stepdad has been jealous and his family has commented that I shouldn't need my grandpa because I have my stepdad. His family has expressed their dislike for me several times because I have the relationship with grandpa that they feel I should have with their son. My stepdad expected an apology, and when he didn't get one, he told me yet again that he didn't like my behaviour at the dinner. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You actually did ask him to participate as a father in your wedding. He should be happy that you have a great relationship with your grandpa as well, and it makes no sense for him to be jealous. In a sense, he rejected being there for you because he decided he'd rather act like a kid than actually be there for his daughter. I'm sorry that you have to go through this, OP. It's hard to set boundaries when surrounded by toxic people, but you did it and you should be proud of yourself. So, who's paying for the wedding? If I were to take this at face value, I'd absolutely say not the idiot, but I feel like before this, it seemed like you had a good relationship with your stepdad. Something just feels off. If he's jealous, maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's something you don't tell us. He clearly loves you like his own, or he wouldn't have been so hurt. I just feel like there's a bigger picture and we're not seeing it. I, a female teen, entered our yearly town raffle, not thinking I'd win. I just bought tickets because I supported the charity. There are always good prizes, the top one being a gift card for 1000 in a gift card. My stepmom won a fancy wine food basket, which she told us she'd enjoy all to herself as it was her prize, and with the pregnancy and money troubles, she said she deserved something just for her. About two days later, while at my mom's, I got a text saying I won. After collecting my prize, my mom said I should spend it all on things I always wanted, but we couldn't afford, so I did. I got nice shoes, perfumes, makeup, etc. Here's where I made a mistake. I posted to social media about winning and what I got. Within 30 minutes, Dad called me and told me I was selfish and cruel to buy myself unnecessary crap while I knew they were struggling. Stepmom then got on the phone and asked how much I had left, so I said $280. She then asked if I would return my stuff or at the very least give them the gift card so they could get stuff for the baby because I knew how badly they were struggling. I said no, just like her gift basket, it was mine to keep. She started crying and calling me names I couldn't understand, and Dad took the phone, saying he was disappointed in me and that I'd changed the way he viewed me. I just hung up afterward. Dad told my mom that I shouldn't come over for a few weeks until everyone calms down. My stepsister texted me saying, screw them, they shouldn't be having more kids that they can't afford. But my stepmom had been sending me messages begging to help them out for the innocent baby's sake, and now I feel extremely guilty. Not the idiot, your stepsister is exactly right. Your dad and stepmom's decision to have more children is not your responsibility. You're still a child yourself, and they are responsible for paying for your and your siblings' care, not the other way around. It may be a blessing that you get some distance from your dad. If it continues, consider making it official that your mom has 100% custody, but dad would rather spend money in court to fight it than child support, and if I'm being honest, I'd miss my stepsister. We're really close. I won't lie, I've enjoyed it. I know this will sound pathetic, but I've never had name brand things that were new, so opening those boxes just can't describe the happiness it gave me. Keep those messages from your stepmom too, OP. Your stepmom shouldn't be begging a teenager for money for her baby. 
In fact, keep any messages you get from them regarding this. If your dad has money to fight for custody in court, he shouldn't need his teen daughter's gift cards. You just learned a valuable lesson. Never advertise you won money. I don't care how much it is. Someone will always decide they should get a piece of it because, since you won it, you didn't work for it, so you really don't deserve it. While it might be a nice gesture for you to help them out, they have absolutely no right to try to guilt you into helping them. They are laying it on thick. Your stepsister is right. They shouldn't be having children they can't afford. You can't bail them out. They will continue to demand and demand. Stepmom is definitely the idiot. Her prize is all for her. Your prize is all for her. What a hypocrite. I, 31 female, and my husband, 36, have two boys, a kindergartner and one who is two years older than the youngest. My husband works in an office and he can work a few days a week from home, but he prefers not to because he says it's easier to focus in the office. I run a small business from home. I don't have a lot of daily work, just some emails and planning, maybe three hours a day, but the business does make up about a third of our household income. But my youngest son is home all day, and dealing with him takes a lot of energy. He's really high energy and will probably wreck something if you leave him alone for an hour. The older one comes home at three and both of them are with me until eight or nine, which is when my husband usually comes home. A few days ago, I was exhausted and I didn't make dinner. When my husband came home, I asked him if we could just order something. He was also tired and we were both short-tempered, so we ended up snapping at each other. He said I should have at least ordered before he got home and he was hungry. I said I forgot and it's not fair that food is always my problem. He said that I'm home all day and I don't have much work to do, so I'm a stay-at-home mom and should at least take care of dinner. I said he had no idea how much I do every day, and he said he'd handle the kids for an entire day while also working from home just to prove it should be easy for me. I said sure, so he arranged to work from home yesterday. I slept in and when I woke up, he was already frazzled from getting the older one ready for school. He had to cancel a meeting to make breakfast and was worried about that. Then, when he took another meeting later on, the boys went out to play in the yard, got super muddy and left footprints all over the house. He then had to mop and I didn't help at all. By this point, I felt guilty because it was definitely more challenging for him to take care of work simultaneously, but all I wanted was an apology. He said he was doing this to show that I do nothing all day and if he just admitted he was wrong, I would have helped out immediately. Later on, he had another meeting and he told the boys not to bother him for an hour. But about 20 minutes in, they got into an argument about something and our younger one went into my husband's room to complain. He was really loud and my husband's video was also on. Then he told the kid to leave him alone, but he was upset and crying and wasn't listening. After a few minutes, my husband went back to the meeting and apologized to the other people. When it was finished, he was really angry at me. He said I could see what was happening and I just watched him struggle without offering to help. I said all you had to say was please help he said I shouldn't be so petty and prideful. This probably made him look a bit stupid in front of his manager, but it was only a few minutes and I don't think it was the huge deal he made it out to be. He's seriously saying, shouldn't be so petty and prideful? While well, you're being petty, with reason, he is the one being prideful. All he had to do was admit he was wrong and you'd have helped, but he chose to screw up in front of his manager rather than admit fault. You are not the idiot. He deserved a little comeuppance. If he doesn't come home until 8 or 9, you are basically a single mother working part-time while taking full care of two small children and maintaining an entire household with little to no help from him. You're allowed to occasionally be exhausted. He was an idiot for making you feel guilty about one dinner. He was an even bigger idiot to insinuate that what you do is no big deal. The icing on his idiot cake was claiming he could easily do that. Screw around and find out. With so many people working from home now, people obviously understand there's a slight possibility a kid will interrupt something. It was likely no big deal to his meeting, and he deserved it. His saying you can see him struggling but you did nothing is the whole problem. He sees you struggling and does nothing to help take things off your plate, he piles more stuff onto it. OP, I think he needs a few more weeks of working from home to really appreciate your work. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong here, but my girlfriend thinks I am. In the last seven years, I've lost my father, two brothers, a sister and two uncles. I'm now the only living child my mom has, and she has no living siblings, so we're close. We live in different cities, so we don't get to see each other too often, maybe once every two months for a day. I'll call her daily to check in and see how she is since she cannot text. 
I'll give quick five-minute calls on my way to and from work and when I'm on my own, for example, if I'm home alone or if I'm walking to the shops. My girlfriend knows I do this and it doesn't interfere with our time together. She sat me down last night to say she finds it weird how much I talk to my mum and thinks I should heavily cut down. I asked why she thought that and she just said it was far too excessive and that I shouldn't be talking to her that much. I disagreed with her and refused to reduce how much I talked to her. She said I was disregarding her feelings and not listening to her. I just said that listening to her does not mean doing whatever she asks. I pointed out that talking to my mum does not affect her in the slightest and she just repeated that it was weird and excessive and that I should listen to her. Am I the idiot for talking to my mum? Not the idiot. Your girlfriend has no right to dictate who you can talk to and when. It does not interfere with your time with your girlfriend, nor is it excessive. Your mum is widowed and has been hugely bereaved, as have you. Gosh, ringing her twice daily for five minutes and sometimes when on your own is hardly taking much time out of your day. It'd be different if you were on the phone for hours and hours each and every evening, such that you had no time for your girlfriend. Then she'd have a reason to say something, but you aren't. 20 years ago, I might have said, that's a little weird, dude. I hate how I had to call every week. Now I realize few people on this earth will even come close to being dependable and worthy of your time and love as your parents. Giving your mom five minutes after everything she's lost is perfectly fine. Your girlfriend lacks the perspective she might not understand. That is her problem that she needs to figure out. I would seriously question your compatibility with your girlfriend, though I hope it's something that can be worked out and maybe she's just being naive.